Here I would like to share my experience of working on this piece and performing this piece. I would share what amazing things I have discovered and how these discoveries have affected my performance. A question to my own self, what benefit is it to understand the motive constructions of this piece or any other pieces besides just to satisfy my natural sense of curiosity? The nature of this composition is very fragmented. Here I give you an illustration. It is like this jigsaw puzzle. First task to do when I started working on this piece, I tried to identify each piece, what color it is, piece by piece, until I have identified all the colors of these small pieces of a jigsaw and how they are assembled. Here it goes, and it was a wow for me. And then I will try to connect all pieces of the same color. After observing and realizing their positions, finally I can start to understand why a composer spread the same color in a particular setting. I began to understand the meaning of its placement, and I began to be amazed that what seems to be random happening is actually the product of a brilliant designing. Just like the Impressionist paintings, we enjoy its truest beauty when we gaze at them from a distance. We may marvel at its intricate details at a closer look, but we will fully understand the entire constructions of those amazing details when we step back and marvel at them from a distance. When I finally see the entire constructions of the small passages or segments in this Leila Joyous, I am literally stunned, like a revelation of the truest beauty of this piece. Back to these self-questionings, I start to find the answers. And now looking back to my illustrations here, I started to analyze, for example, for the yellow pieces, how far apart they are spread out. Are those yellow pieces of the same color intensity? Are some brighter than the others or they are all the same? Are they the same size? And how about the surrounding pieces? In this regard, we may appreciate more our music analysis teachers. Applaud to them. Another benefit of this revelation is that I am more aware of how amazing the composer is and what an incredible artistic expression of soul and mind. I appreciate more the composers and I definitely enjoy more this piece, Leila Joayus. It is a satisfyingly good feeling to be in awe. My understanding of these placements and their situations absolutely will shape the ways I will design this piece in my preparations for performing it. In particular, appropriate moments, I can make more balanced and precise calculations when I should hold back the tempo or move forward aiming for a particular destination. Let's dive into this piece now. Right away, we meet this introduction that is so amazing in many ways. It is very evocative for sure and one could hardly miss that this is from Debussy. Not only that, it conveys materials for the entire piece. We will explore further its motif. Motif 1 whole tone scale, a series of four notes or half of an octave. And this motif number one is at a tritone range. Now, with the second motif, we have the augmented triads in the whole tone scale. And this augmented triad can be broken down into two major third intervals, which Debussy will utilize them. Let us now take a closer look at each of those two motifs. The first motif is a downward whole tone scale. We have a series of four notes, C sharp, B, A, and G. Every two of these notes have the major second interval, or the whole step. And the first to the fourth notes, we have the interval of augmented fourth, or commonly known as the tritone. There are actually only two kinds of augmented triads in any given whole tone scale if you realize. We have first the A augmented triad and then the B augmented triad. All six notes in a whole tone scale build these two triads as seen in the picture. Going back to this introduction theme, we have those two augmented triads. First the one with C sharps and A on it and second, the one with G and B on it. The alternations of the two augmented triads will become one of the dominating themes in this piece. Now let us explore what are all the dominating themes in this piece. First, we have the main theme. Let us see its connections to the introduction theme. Look at the first four notes of this main theme. This is what I discovered. 
The main theme is one whole tone higher than the introduction theme. This is effectively elevating the intensity, the excitement, right from the beginning of the piece. And speaking of the raised excitement, this main theme in Lydian mode gives the impressions that we are on a subdominant chord. Let me explain. The D sharp here gives the impressions that the tonic is in E major, and therefore as if we are stepping on a subdominant chord. What atmosphere subdominant chord gives to us? Joy, spaciousness, carefree, liberation. And not to mention that dotted rhythm. It is like the jolly foot stomping of a happy tap dance. Someone is marching onto a vacation destination. Notice also here that the first four notes of the Lydian mode are in a whole tone setting. And how efficient Debussy is. This is a creative product of a genius. How could he make such a connection? Just wow. Another excitement, look at the growing span of this main theme, from a major third to a perfect fourth and to a perfect fifth. Now, looking at another angle, we discover a set of three notes, C sharp as a center point, accompanied by one note below and above it. We have here C sharp with B and D sharp. This set of three notes will appear throughout this piece in various transformations. Here are a few examples. This is the first example, an improvisation like passage, but definitely imitating the same gestures as the main theme. Another excellent example here. How well transform this main theme. And another example here, very obvious but at the same time so well disguised, especially in this Hemiola setting. And here my favorite passage. This passage was the one that drawn me to learn this joyous piece. Again, very obvious, but at the same time so well transformed. This transformation is the key that makes this piece so fresh all the time, yet structurally so intact. Amazing how efficient and how playful, how witty Debussy is. There are many more examples in this piece than what I am showing here. Now, I would like to show you another way to look at the connections between this main theme and the introduction's theme. Remember the first motif from the introductions? The whole tone scale downward from C sharp down to G. Now, Debussy is trying to create a significant contrast for the main theme. We now have C sharp going upward, but no longer in whole tone scale but on a Lydian mode. Later on in this piece, Debussy put a natural sign to the top G, creating the exact inverted interval. Now we arrive at the second theme or the contrasting theme. Here in this contrasting theme, we find the rhythmic augmentations of the main theme. The fast semi-quavers of the ascending scale now become much more relaxed quavers, sending in much less dense rhythmic activity. Again, this contrasting theme goes through many transformations as well. Now, this is the third dominating theme that you will frequently hear throughout the piece. As I mentioned earlier, this theme plays with the two types of augmented chords in a whole tone scale. Notice here that the right hand is a rhythmic diminution of the four whole tone scale at the interval of a tritone. And Debussy also writes the counterpart of these tritone intervals, that is the perfect fifth that takes place in the accompaniment. Last but not least, Debussy is also very efficient in recycling the accompaniment figurations. Here we have the guitar strumming for the accompaniment. Now it appears like a double drum strike.
So here, you can see the clear comparison here, the juxtapositions of the interval triton or diminished fifth from D sharp to A and the interval perfect fifth from E to A. And look at the accompaniment of the second theme. Now it appears like a harp accompaniment. Now, it appears like a variations on the accompaniment figurations playing with all open fifth arpeggios. Isn't this so naughty of Debussy? The consistency of open fifth accompaniment is maintained throughout the entire piece. Truly amazing, behind all the beautiful and evocative sound lies a great strategy in constructing these compositions. Truly, this is a masterpiece and one of Debussy's greatest legacies. Let us go back to these illustrations. Identifying the connections of scattered fragments is just the beginning of our effort to design our performance on any piece, catered to our personal taste. If we do not have this overall networking, our design is merely based on intuitions, which may work well locally, I mean between two adjacent species, but may not fully grasp the magic of such constructions. For me personally, when this type of fragmented composition is well designed and delivered, its scattered piece is like a star, that on its own time will twinkle. Therefore, I will experience a series of exchanging twinkles of those pieces from the beginning to the end of the piece. To me, I found that this is the beauty of impressionisms in music. Leila Joias is the perfect example for that. Now let me summarize the function, the transformations, and the distributions of the motifs or themes in this Leila Joias. At first, we have this introduction theme that gives birth to two motifs, and each motif will give birth to a specific theme. We have the main theme here, which I illustrate with the yellow color, that will occupy their post throughout this piece. Then we have the contrasting theme, and we also have the bridging theme. The last one is the accompaniment theme, or more appropriately, motif. We have the whole tone scale and the Lydian scale from motif number one. From motif number two, we have the augmented fourth or diminished fifth or the tritone, and we have also its counterpart, the perfect fifth interval. In total, we have five themes or motifs that come from one mother. The introduction theme, as the mother of all, come in its original appearance few times in the middle and at the very end. Amazing artwork in music this is. <laughs>